Welcome back to Rant Apocalypse Talks the Walking Dead. I'm Justin. Hey, I'm Kelly, and together we are the world's greatest mother and son Walking Dead reviewing team in the history of the Earth. And we are here to bring you guys a video on the top five things that you may have missed in The Walking Dead Season 7, Episode 5, entitled Go Getters. <laughs> Which... Starting with not number five, <laughs> but with a bonus. Which cracks me up, because we never can go by the numbers that we actually have. No, we cannot. But the bonus is Carl's no good, terrible, horribly bad dart throws. Good Lord, <laughs> kid. I don't think I saw him hit one. And yes, you're probably saying I did not miss that. I definitely saw that. Yeah. But we had to call that out because it was hilarious. It was sad. And it has major repercussions because we see Carl at the end of the episode getting in the Negan truck. Yeah. Not any truck going back to the sanctuary, but the Negan truck attempting to go back and assassinate Negan himself. And how the hell is he going to do it when not only does he only have a knife with him, but he couldn't even hit the broad side of a barn if he happened to have a gun anyways. Well, hopefully he won't throw that knife and he'll he'll actually go up to Negan and stab him with it. That's the hope. Got my fingers crossed. All right, our number five thing you might have missed, the flowers that Jesus gave Maggie. They were green and blue, and blue inspires strength and calming, and green signifies release, which is something obviously she needs to do. The green flowers were also just a really nice tie-in to the green balloons that Enid placed on Glenn's grave. Yeah, it was really cool seeing that because that was uh, also a callback to season six whenever that signified that Glenn was still alive. So it's very cool, very sad that the green not only signified the life of Glenn, but the death of Glenn as well. And also is a very cool callback to the comic books whenever we see Maggie and Enid on the graves. That was actually something that we see in the comic books, but it wasn't Enid, it was Maggie and Sophia kneeling on Glenn's grave. Our number four thing that you might have missed, and that was the necklace that Jesus gave to Sasha. It was actually the one that Rosita had made for Abe. Abe dropped it at the hilltop during the Alexandrians' first very eventful and terrible visit to the hilltop. And the thing that was interesting about that was it was the day that Abe actually decided that he was going to go for a relationship with Sasha. So it was kind of sweet that she ended up with it. All right, people, stick with me because this one's about to get wild and a little bit crazy and a little bit of bullshit. But <laughs> stick with me and I think that you might like it. Our number three is the lobster bib that we see in Sasha and Maggie's new room. I thought this was very cool that they showed this, and I think that it means a lot for what we're seeing right now with our group, and especially with Maggie and Sasha. Because if you look into some symbolism, some meaning behind the lobster, the hard exterior of a lobster animal totem acts as a protective sheath and is symbolic of the guard that we put up in order to protect ourselves. Lobsters grow in their shells, adding new layers and shedding old ones through a process called molting. This word is also used in reference to birds, and it holds a general meaning of growth and cycles. For the lobster, the shell is a reminder of its past. Some traits of lobsters are protection, resolution, control, persistence, and strength. I believe that these fit Maggie, Sasha, and Enid coming to the hilltop perfectly as they're adding new aspects to their lives, new people and new ideals, as well as shedding their old ways of thinking. Whenever Sasha and Jesus are talking about their situation, the fact that Gregory's trying to kick their ass out, Sasha says that she will scavenge for Maggie. And just like the lobsters, our group are scavenging for food and supplies in order to survive Negan. Mic drop. Seriously, uh, you should be a politician because that was some deep bullshit, but I believed every bit of it. I appreciate that. <laughs> Our number two moment was Carl and Enid holding hands as they took a stroll on their roller skates, which was a nice nod to the Walking Dead comics. Issue 21 that featured Sophia and Carl holding hands. It's really cool how they're playing up this Enid and Carl relationship. They're playing up the fact that Enid is having a much deeper relationship and a bond to Maggie. And this is something that happened in the Walking Dead comic books with Sophia. Unfortunately, Sophia is no longer around. So they're really putting Enid in these roles that Sophia played in the comic books. And I thought that was just a nice little nod to the Walking Dead comic books. Because if you're a fan of the comic books, you're really liking the fact that they are replacing Enid with Sophia. Because it was sad to not have Sophia around. And I'm glad that Enid is taking her place. 
I thought you were going to say one of the things that we might have missed was in that kiss that Enid actually slipped Carl the tongue. I thought that's what you were going to say. I guess not. <laughs> Some people might have missed that. I did not miss that. Uh, I called that out quite quickly. Yes, because you did. Enid was fast to put the tongue in there. <laughs> All right. Uh, our number one moment that you might have missed in this episode was Gregory's line, we don't bury the dead, we burn them which was interesting when you look back on season one, episode five, Wildfire, when Glenn told Daryl and Morales, we don't burn them, we bury them. The campsite had just got attacked by walkers the night before, and they had a lot of people dead. And that was just such a, a nice thing. That that's, that's when you kind of realized that Glenn was such a good guy. You realized it before then, but that one was the moment where it kind of like hammered it home that this is a dude that we want in our group. This is a guy that you want as your best friend. And he just had so much humanity in him. He will be missed. There were so many callbacks to Glenn in this episode. It was fantastic. Enid got Herschel's watch. It was just great seeing all these things with Glenn. It needed to be in this episode because it was a heavy focus on Maggie and her loss of Glenn, as well as Enid too, because uh, Enid and Glenn had a, a very strong bond, even though they didn't know each other for that long. Right. And when you say that um, that line illustrated what a great guy Glenn was, it also illustrated what a horrible guy Gregory is. Indeed. Asshole number one. Mm -hmm. So those are just a few of the things you might have missed in this episode. Please let us know some things that you may have caught that we missed and put those in the comment box down below. You can also email us. It's rantpocalypse at gmail.com. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. We greatly appreciate it. And we hope you guys have a fantastic day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.